This is Twit. We talked a lot about Zerodium in the past. Um, they're the folks who offer extremely large bounties for new and unknown zero-click vulnerabilities. And unlike the good guys at HackerOne or Zero Day, these creeps sell these zero days, doubtless at significant profit, to unknown but certainly big-time buyers, such as Israel's NSO group for use by the Pegasus spyware and almost certainly to governments and intelligence services around the world. In other words, the platform publishers, such as Apple and Google, are the last to learn of these exploits. Well, now, on Saturday, TechCrunch brings us news of a newcomer named CrowdFence. <laughs> Maybe they're fencing the, I guess they're fencing the, the illegal, the ill-gotten goods of a zero day. Um, and CrowdFence intends to give Zerodium a run for its money. Um, and, you know, this is not really a market where we'd like to see competition flour flourishing. Uh, we'd prefer that it, the market didn't exist at all. Uh, I have a screenshot uh, in the show notes of CrowdFence's current offering lineup at the top of the heap they've got sms and mms full chain zero click compromises the discovery and disclosure to them of which would net someone selling it somewhere between seven and nine million wow u.s dollars i mean basically you find one and if you check your ethics at the door uh, you're done for life, yeah, right? I yeah. mean, you could probably survive on $9 million. Uh, you know, I mean, actually just off the interest. Um, okay, so in this case, full chain means something that gets the entire job done. Not just a, oh, look, it crashed, but, you know, oh, look, uh, we, we now have root access to do whatever we want sort of thing. Uh, a full chain zero click for Android brings in five million, whereas the same thing for iOS is priced at between five and seven. And these are all just within the top paying mobile platform category. Uh, CrowdFence is also interested in mobile apps, um, other mobile things, desktop, virtualization, baseband, meaning, you know, the, the, the radio un that underlies our smartphones, enterprise, web apps, and more. TechCrunch's headline was, Price of Zero-Day Exploits Rises as Companies Harden Products Against Hackers. Okay, well, that's good. With the subheading, a startup is now offering millions of dollars for tools to hack iPhones, Android devices, WhatsApp, and iMessage. TechCrunch writes, tools that allow government hackers to break into iPhones and Android phones, popular software like the Chrome and Safari browsers, and chat apps like WhatsApp and iMessage are now worth millions of dollars. And their price has multiplied in the last few years as these products get harder to hack. On Monday, Startup CrowdFence published its updated price list for these hacking tools, which are commonly known as zero days because they rely on unpatched vulnerabilities in software that are unknown to the makers of that software. Companies like CrowdFence and one of its competitors, Zerodium, claim to acquire these zero days with the goal of reselling them to other organizations, usually government agencies or government contractors, which claim they need the hacking tools to track or spy on criminals. And of course, we have lots of evidence we've discussed through the years on this podcast that, you know, politicians and political activists and, you know, enemies of powerful people, whoever, end up getting spied on, not just intelligence services tracking, you know, known bad guys. 
Crowdfence, they write, is now offering between five and seven million for zero days to break into iPhones, five million for Android, three million and three and a half for Chrome and Safari, zero days respectively, and three to five million for WhatsApp and iMessage, zero days. So the increase in prices comes as companies like Apple, Google, and Microsoft are making it harder to hack their devices and apps, which means their users are better protected. Okay. And so in other words, of course, as zero days become more rare, they naturally become more valuable. It's good news for everyone that they are becoming more rare. TechCrunch continues, Dustin Childs, the head of threat awareness at Trend Zero's Zero Day, uh, Trend Micro's Zero Day Initiative said, quote, it should be harder year over year to exploit whatever software we're using, whatever devices we're using. Unlike CrowdFence and Zerodium, ZDI pays researchers to acquire zero days, on the other hand, not seven or nine million dollars, then reports them to the companies affected with the goal of getting the vulnerabilities fixed. So those that you know, those are the good guys where you get to keep your ethics with you while you accept, you know, some good money, but not enough so that you never have to do anything and can retire on a beach. Shane Huntley, the head of Google's tag team, their TAG threat analysis group tracks hackers and the use of zero days. He said, as more zero day vulnerabilities are discovered by threat intelligence team like Google's, and platform protections continue to improve, the time and effort required from attackers increases, resulting in an increase in the cost for their findings. In a report last month, Google said that last year in 2023, it saw hackers use a total of, <clears throat> here it comes, 97 zero-day vulnerabilities in the wild. That was last year. In all of 2023, 97 zero-day vulnerabilities. And the various spyware vendors like the NSO group, which often work with zero-day brokers, were responsible for three quarters of all zero days targeting Google products and Android. People in and around the zero day industry agree that the job of exploiting vulnerabilities is getting more difficult. Dave uh, uh, Manchuri, a security analyst with knowledge of the zero day market, said that hard targets like Google's Pixel and iPhone have been becoming harder to hack every year. He said, I expect the cost to continue to increase significantly over time. Paolo Stagno, the director of research at CrowdFence, like right, the new bad guys, told TechCrunch, quote, the mitigations that vendors are implementing are working, and it's leading the whole trade to become much more complicated, much more time-consuming, and so clearly this is then reflected in the price. <clears throat> the first time I read that, I thought, trade? What trade? Then, then I realized that they're calling this zero-day vulnerability finding and selling a trade. And I suppose it is, though it feels like ransomware gangs talking about their profit. <laughs> profit? Yeah. You no, know, no, it's uh, just trade. How, it's not how trade. about theft through extortion? <laughs> you know, how is that profit? But I yeah. suppose that it is sadly profitable though it hardly seems earned. Anyway, the, the Stagno guy from CrowdFence explained in 2015 and or 16, it was possible for only one researcher to find one or more zero days and develop them into a full-fledged exploit targeting iPhones and Androids. He says, now this is almost impossible as it requires a team of several researchers, which also causes prices to go up. CrowdFence currently offers the highest publicly known prices to date outside of Russia, where a company called Operation Zero announced last year that they, that they were willing to pay up to $20 million for tools to hack iPhones and Android devices. 
The prices, the prices in Russia, however, may be inflated because of the war in Ukraine and the subsequent sanctions, which could discourage or outright, outright prevent people from dealing with a Russian company. Outside of the public view, it's possible that governments and companies are paying even higher prices. This David uh, Manucheri uh, guy previously worked at Lynchpin Labs, a startup that focused on developing and selling zero days. And again, there's no way that selling zero days is is ethical and cool. Lynchpin Labs, unfortunately, was acquired by U.S. defense contractor L3 Technologies, now known as L3 Harris, in 2028. And that's encouraging. Anyway, David said, quote, the prices CrowdFence is offering researchers for individual Chrome, remote code execution, and sandbox escapes uh, are below market rate what? from what I've seen what? in the zero day. In, wow. wow. Below cow. market rate. I, that seemed like a good price to me. Uh, okay. Wow. Alfonso de, Gor- de, de Gregorio, the founder of Zero Nomicon, an, an, an Italy based startup that acquire also acquires zero days. So there's, you know, they're scattered around agreed with this, telling TechCrunch that prices could certainly be higher. Well, I guess he wants them to stay low because that's the price he has to pay researchers who, or, or hackers who find them. I won't, really don't want to call them researchers. Zero days, TechCrunch writes, have been used in court-approved law enforcement operations. In 2016, the FBI used a zero day, we know where this is going, provided by a startup called Azimuth to break into the iPhone of one of the shooters who killed 14 people in San Bernardino, according to the Washington Post. In 2020, Motherboard revealed that the FBI, with the help of Facebook and an unnamed third-party company, used a zero day to track down a man who was later convicted for harassing and extorting young girls online. There have also been several cases where zero days and spyware have allegedly been used to target human rights dissidents and journalists in Ethiopia, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, among other countries with poor human rights records. There have also been similar cases of alleged abuse in democratic countries like Greece, Mexico, Poland, and Spain. Neither CrowdFence, Zerodium, or Zeronomicon have ever been accused of being involved in similar cases. On the other hand, remember, they're one party removed. They're not the guys who are doing the exploitating, uh, the, the, the exploiting of these exploits. They're selling to entities which are then turning around and doing this abuse. So, yeah, the, the, you know, these resellers would not be in the loop. They said zero day brokers, as well as spyware companies like NSO Group and Hacking Team, have often been criticized for selling their products to unsavory governments. In response, some of them now pledge to respect export controls in an effort to limit potentially potential abuses from their customers. Stagno said that CrowdFence follows the embargoes and sanctions imposed by the United States, even if the company is based in the UAE. For example, Stagno said that the company would not sell to Afghanistan, Belarus, Cuba, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Russia, South Sudan, Sudan, and Syria, all on the U.S. sanctions That's list. That's a really long list. <laughs> wow. It is. Um, and, and he said, everything the U.S. does, we are on the ball. You know why? Adding that if I bet we're one of their biggest customers. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. Uh huh. We don't want to get them mad. Be, I would bet that the NSA yep. is probably taking our taxpayer money and buying these exploits so that they can do things with it. I, I, bet, I, you. I bet you're right, Leo. Yeah. He said, uh, if an existing customer gets on the U.S. sanctions list, CrowdFence would abandon it. Mm-hmm. All the companies and governments directly sanctioned by the USA are excluded. Of course they are. Uh huh. At least one company, Spyware Consortium uh, Intelexa, 
I-N-T-E-L-L-E-X-A, is on CrowdFence's particular block list. Of Intellexa, Stagno said, I can't tell you whether it has been a customer of ours and whether it has stopped being one. However, as far as I'm concerned, now at this moment, Intellexa could not be a customer of ours. In March, the U.S. government announced sanctions against Intellexa's founder, Tal Dillian, as well as a business associate of his. The first time the government imposed sanctions on individuals imposed in the spyware industry. Intellexa and its partner company, Citrox, has also sanctioned by the U.S., making it harder for the companies as well as the people running it to, to continue doing business. Intellexa's spyware has been reported to have been used against U.S. Congressman Michael McCall, U.S. Senator John Hoven, and the President of the European Parliament, Roberta uh, Metsala, among others. And finally, De Gregorio, the founder of Zero Nomicon, declined to say who the company sells to. On its site, the company has published a code of business ethics. Oh, that's well, right. Because okay. these guys have business <laughs> ethics, Leo. They're so ethical. I wonder, I wonder how many sentences or how many you know words in their uh, ethics statement, which includes vetting customers with the goal of avoiding doing business, quote, with entities known for abusing human rights and respecting export controls. Now, reading about these so-called export controls, one does have to wonder how difficult it would be for any major country on the U.S. sanctions list to establish a behind-the-scenes relationship with another company in a non-sanctioned region to use as a middleman. In any event, I thought the checking, I thought the checking in on the state of the zero-day market would be useful. While it may not be good news that prices are increasing, since that significantly increases incentives to find the, the fewer and fewer remaining zero days that exist, the fact that the prices are rising because these remaining zero days are becoming ever more scarce, well, that's certainly good news. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast or just click one of the links below. <laughs>